Bible to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. We're going to have a, our lesson tonight is entitled, Some Lessons from the Church at Corinth. The church was very carnal, and they experienced a lot of problems. The Lord saw fit to use them, to use Apostle Paul to write to them, that we might glean something from what they did right and what they did wrong. Uh, there's a lot of things to learn from this church and the instructions that Paul gave. Yeah. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start with chapter 5, then we'll move over to chapter 11. Okay. Beginning with verse 1, we'll read through verse 13. It's reported commonly that there's fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife or his stepmom. Apparently, it was well known in the church, and that's what Paul was addressing. And then verse 2 says, and ye, speaking to the church, and ye are puffed up, have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from you, among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning them that had done, that had, that had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together in my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? If you got a sore finger, the whole body hurts if your finger hurts. But a little leaven messes up the whole deal, doesn't it? And then he says, purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you're unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast of the Lord's Supper, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetousness or extortioners, or with idolaters, for well, then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such in one, no, don't eat, take the Lord's Supper, do not eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judges. Therefore, as a church, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. The Lord said, I'll take care of them on the outside. You take care of them on the inside. Amen. That's the Lord's judgment, not ours now. He's the one that instructs as such. But sin was reported to Apostle Paul concerning the church that he had labored with, the church at Corinth. The young man is carrying on with his stepmom, and everybody in the church knew it. And they were puffed up. They didn't like it. Y'all ever been in a church kind of with those a similar problem? Uh, 
I have. Oh. I had one time, I, and I'll just use this as an illustration. Uh, it was commonly reported, a small town, everybody knows everything, plus what they want to add to it. <laughs> but there was a case going on with a, a man and a woman. The man was a member of the church where uh, we were at, and the woman was a member of the First Baptist. Prominent people, the man was, or the woman was, one of the richest families around. Uh, matter of fact, uh, they owned the city of Dybal virtually, the, every, all the timber, the thousands and thousands of acres. This woman was from that family. The man was married, had a kids and what have you. The man came to me one day, one of the deacons did, said, preacher said, it happened to be that this man was a son-in-law of one of the other deacons that was doing this. He came to me about what was going on. He said, I said, yes, I, I've heard talk. And, and, uh, matter of fact, I, with my own eyes, saw them together. But you can't, if somebody out public drinking coffee at a restaurant together, you can't do anything about that. And, you know, uh, uh, maybe they were talking serious things. But anyway, this man came to me, the deacon did, so we got to do something about that. I said, okay, you go talk to his father-in-law. He's a deacon also. Talk to him. Have you done that? No. No. <laughs> I said, well, then we got somebody got to talk to somebody to start with. That's what the Lord said to do. If, if you see this going on, go talk to them, didn't he? And then carry a, a couple with you. Got to have some witnesses. And then tell it to the whole church, wasn't it? Okay. Um, these people were puffed up about it. I didn't like it because it was a bad testimony. They were to exclude this fellow. Now, verse 4 and 5, if you look back at it a second. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you gather together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So they were to exclude him. Oh, well, you've heard the old expression years ago, and they used too young to have heard it, but they had churched him. When they put him out, they call it, they churched him. They put him out of the church. That was the expression used. Uh, now, it said a little 11, and verse 6 and 7 again, let's read those for emphasis sake. Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven, um, you take an apple or an orange or something that's got a bad place on it, it ruins the whole deal. It leavens the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you're unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. A little leaven will uh, corrupt put drop something in a uh, thing of lemonade or drink it's uh, whatever and it corrupts the whole thing doesn't it? Uh, but we come to this the Lord said to, to exclude those okay we had the Lord's Supper here some time ago I won't forget it I've had different experiences but we had the Lord's Supper and I had a couple of men one sat over here and one over here. They were neither members, but they'd been best in the church a good while. And I, we believe in close communion. We, we believe that if you're a member of this body, that's who you're supposed to take the Lord's Supper with, not somebody else. So you're not part of that lump, but you're part of this lump. Anyway, we had the Lord's Supper, and I instructed the fellows to uh, give the uh, drink and the bread and the wine, or the grape juice, to uh, the people, only members of the church. Somebody said, well, uh, well, they, and it so happened that day, uh, that evening, these two men were there. Well, they got offended. 
They never set foot back in the church door again. But I'm going to ask you a question. They weren't members, and yet we're to have control over the, what's in the body of this lump. How are you going to exclude someone if they're not a member? You don't know what's going on in their life, but probably may be really good people. But if you, and I'll tell you this here for your own sake, when you're out and you happen to be in a congregation that takes the Lord's Supper, abstain from it unless you remember to do it right here at this church. Now, I'm not, I'm getting right down to the nitty gritty. If you're going to be part of a body, you're going to be part of it. And that's why the church will receive members as a part of the, their membership. Likewise, if they have to dismiss them, then they can do it. And this case with this man going on, but I didn't finish the story, but no one ever did anything about it. And the Lord finally took care of it. Uh, the man had to wipe three kids, but one day uh, there in the city of Dybal, he came and uh, right where those scales are, as you go on the left side, he ran under a log truck got out of the car and stood there a minute. It's all of them. But the church is supposed to do something, but do it in the right manner. First, do the way the scripture says, go talk to him. Uh, this fellow didn't want to go talk to him. Uh, <laughs> he wanted somebody else to do something about it, but he didn't want to do the talking. Well, it so happened some other people did talk to him, but it, it, the guy was a lot of pride and what have you, he, he wouldn't listen. Uh, but you, the, the church was to judge those within. Look at verse 12 and 13. For what have I to do to judge them that are also that are, also that are without? Do not, the Lord said, do you not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, you put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Now, that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Now, uh, it's still the teaching of the scriptures. If we're going to do the Lord's will, we can't do it our way. We've got to do it his way. Okay, right quickly, uh, over to 1 Corinthians 11, and I'm going to uh, talk about the Lord's Supper again. They were instructed there to don't take the Lord's Supper with someone that's doing that, and don't take it with somebody that's not a member. Uh, but 1 Corinthians 11, verse 18, verse 18. Okay. Well, first of all, when you come together, I hear that there be divisions among you. Now, not only that I hear, but I partly believe it. <laughs> what he said, I partly believe what's going on. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. But when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before him, before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. For what shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I pray you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, which he uh, supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till you come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Notice real close before we read further. That's an adverb. It describes an action. It doesn't describe a person. Unworthy describes would be an adjective that would describe the person. But this is an adverb, unworthily. That means in how you do it, the Lord's Supper. All right? Because one fellow said none of us are worthy except for the blood of the Lamb. We couldn't. We shouldn't. But verse 28 says, But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily and eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, get this verse, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or have died. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If we take care of business, <laughs> we're not to be judged. When we're chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if a man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Now apparently they were abusing the Lord's Supper. Uh, we read where some were even had gotten drunken. And here was, Paul said, you got your own houses to eat at, but this is special, this is for the Lord. Honest confession, good for the soul, they say. <laughs> when I started out as a young preacher, I wanted to do everything right, that, I mean, just right as it could be, and still do. But in this case, I listened to the wrong man, and I misapplied the scripture, and that can happen. But I went to a church fellowship, and I hadn't been pastoring for a little while. I hadn't been in church long before the Lord called me to preach and put me in a church. But this old preacher, Said, he was using these scriptures here where it says you got your own house to eat. And the, at the fellowship of the churches, we all like to get together and eat out there. Uh, or they did. But this fellow taught me that it was wrong to eat in church. And I fell for it. And so when we came time to eat, we would ease out. We wouldn't stay and eat. A church is a group of people, not a building. Right? Amen. See, <laughs> that's how dumb a fellow could be, and I was wrong. And following this fellow's admonition, I thought, well, he must have something. But this scripture here was speaking about the Lord's Supper. They were abusing the Lord's Supper. Now, but it's a serious matter, isn't it? And I've hesitated to do it for a while, and uh, I can tell some of y'all some reasons, but uh, th there should be a time that we would do the Lord's Supper. But uh, uh, verse 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come." This picture is the Lord's death. The act wherein he paid the debt that we owe. But he said we do show the Lord's death. Now verse 27 says, For whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Don't do it just in any manner. 
I've seen a group of people, and you've seen them before, hey, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. Not even a church group. That may be a group of Christians. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper. It's wrong. Don't do it that way. You don't know what kind of leaven that you're lumped with. But some were doing it the wrong way. And again, let's read verse 29 and 30. And for emphasis sake, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So I'd say to you, it's a serious thing that was serious to the Lord, and he gave these instructions. And I don't want to get any of you sick nor die prematurely. But there comes a time, and y'all pray for that time, that the Lord will take care of the business that needs to be taken care of first. Okay? And I'll share with you what uh, one of the hesitations there. All right. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through verse 8. Tell the old boy that they had to exclude. The boy that they excluded, he told him to take them back. Okay, apparently they included the young man that Paul talked to him about. But apparently the guy got his act straight. And Paul said in verse 6, Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many, so that contrariwise you ought rather to forgive him, comfort him, lest perhaps such an one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Take him back. That's what he was saying. The guy got his act straight. He repented. The Lord forgave his sin. And Paul is issuing to him now, but they, they were reluctant about taking him back. But they were to forgive him, were they not? Okay. Any questions that you'd like to mention about our scriptures.